freaking choking it too. Oh, about the same size. Look at that. Look at that. That's what I'm talking about. Hey guys, Tyler Berger here with Bass Fishing HQ, and today I want to talk about one of the deadliest lures that there is for catching not only big fish, but a lot of fish. I got a real special guest to help me out with these jig tips. This is Tyler from Tyler's Real Fishing. We got two Tylers together. <laughs> two Tylers. We're going to nail this jig video. You guys are going to love it, so stay tuned. It's going to be a good one. Woo! Dang, that sucker was completely frayed up my line, but. The first tip that I want to give you when it comes to fishing a jig is don't overcomplicate jig color. There's a ton of jig colors out there on the market. You have greens and browns and blacks and blues and whites and chartreuse. There's so many different colors out there on the market. It can actually be extremely confusing. I've probably caught 500, 600, I don't even know how to say, maybe over a thousand bass on a jig over my lifetime. And there's three color of jigs that I primarily use all the time. Like 98% of the time, it's one of these three colors. And that's black and blue, green pumpkin, and white. Okay, that's it. Black and blue, I like to use it on cloudy days or in muddy water. I like to use green pumpkin anytime I'm fishing around fish that are eating bluegills or fish that are eating crawfish. And then obviously, I like to use a white one whenever I'm fishing around fish that are eating bait fish like shad. Now, let's kick it over to Tyler. What a great tip, Tyler number one. I'm Tyler number two, here for tip Number two, jig fishing is one of my favorite things to do anywhere around the country, no matter if I'm in Minnesota, New York, Texas, Missouri, as we are right now, really a jig catches bass anywhere. One of my biggest things I have for the jig is not necessarily even about the jig itself. It's more about what you do with the jig. The biggest part in my experience with, with, with getting a fish in the boat or on the bank when you're fishing a jig is having a strong enough hook set. There's one. Not very big, but seems that every little black flip that I skip under catches me a fish. All right, there those are our first little spotted boy of the day. I can't tell you how many times when I was first beginning bass fishing, and I still make fun of my dad for this actually, my hook set was just kind of weak. It was just kind of a wimpy little hook set, and I, I really wouldn't give it the juice, as I call it. You want to give those fish the juice or give them the sauce. And so if you don't do that, this thick wire hook, which most jigs out there have, is not going to penetrate into the fish's mouth beyond the barb. You're just not going to land the fish. You may hook it, fight that fish in a little bit, but I'm telling you, if you do not have a strong enough hook set, you're not going to land the majority of your jig fish. Tip number three when it comes to fishing a jig is actually kind of a two-part tip. The first tip is it is really best to try to use the right style of jig for the right location, for the place that you are fishing. <laughs> Golly, I love it so much. If you're wanting to skip a jig, maybe that's under a dock or maybe that's under overhanging trees, there are jigs that are really made to skip more effectively. If you're fishing a lot of rock, a football jig is actually made to come through that rock. If you're fishing in a grass situation, there's jigs that are actually created to go through that grass a little bit more effectively. So really, if you can afford to buy multiple styles of jigs, it's really going to help you to be more efficient out there on the water. You're going to get hung up less. You're going to be able to fish the cover or structure that you're fishing a little bit better. Now, with all of that being said, I understand that all of us have budgets, right? We can't always just go out and spend hundreds of dollars on jigs. If you guys are just looking for one or two jigs to fit basically all your needs, I'm going to suggest that you go ahead and get you a green pumpkin Arky style jig. If you guys are kind of just getting into jig fishing, this is what you want to start with because it can mimic a bluegill, it can mimic a crawfish, you can fish it in pretty deep water, you can fish it in really shallow water, you can fish it around all types of cover, and it's going to come through that cover very, very well so if you can't afford to buy a lot of jigs just go with that arky style jig green pumpkin and you're going to be good to go tip number four to make you guys better jig anglers actually has to do with the weight of the jig
There's one. Hey, <laughs> bring it in. I didn't give him no chances to get off. I said, you are getting in this boat, mister. I fished this whole dock and nothing came from it until I got to the hardest possible to reach and hardest possible place to get a fish out of. I know when I was you know, first walking down Bass Pro Shops or any tackle aisle, and I would see the different weights on jigs that actually refer to the jig head itself. Most of the time, the ones you're gonna find in the store are going to be you know, three eighths ounce, half ounce, and five eighths ounce, with sometimes you'll find a quarter, three quarter, sometimes even one full ounce jigs. And if you're fishing in Florida or really heavy grass, you can find ounce and a quarter, ounce and a half jigs. But for most people out there, those are gonna be the main three, your three eighths, your half, and your five eighths. And for some reason, a lot of the jig companies that I've worked with and talked to say that five eighths is not near the, the high seller as it should be. And in my experience, the heavier your jig, the bigger your fish. I'm not gonna say that is always the key, but in most scenarios, I see people are scared of that 5 8 ounce jig. They think it's gonna fall too quickly. And in some situations, you don't want a 5 8 ounce or a one ounce because you're fishing a pond, let's say, that has a really mucky grass or a slime in it. You want that lighter jig, of course, a slower rate of fall. It will not sink into that bottom as much. But if you're fishing an area like we have today, where you have some docks, you have gravel, rocks, any kind of harder bottom, you can get away with a heavier size jig. And in my experience, that triggers a bigger bite from the biggest fish underneath that dock, underneath that lay down, underneath that tree. Heavier can equal bigger bass. Tip number five when it comes to fishing a jig, and this is really kind of a mindset thing. A lot of us, especially if you're not familiar with catching fish on jigs, or you just kind of lost confidence in fishing a jig, the best thing that you can really do as a fisherman is just pick up that one rod and take only that one rod when you go out fishing, that jig rod. That is the best way for you to gain confidence in any lure, but especially when you're fishing a jig. Just fish it everywhere. Try not to pick up that rod that you're always throwing, whether that's a crankbait or a drop shot. Just pick up that jig and fish it everywhere. Fish it shallow, fish it deep. Just keep it in your hand. And it's once you start catching a few fish here and there, you're gonna gain a ton of confidence with that jig. And not only that, a jig simply just catches bigger than average fish. So tip number five, keep that jig in your hand. I guarantee if you follow those five tips, you're gonna start catching a lot more fish on jigs. Mm -hmm. Tyler, if they wanna know more about jigs, what should they do? I got a great video that I made last year covering how to fish the top four styles of jigs in in-depth masterclass that will have linked somewhere up here as well as in the video description below. I wanna thank you guys for having me on the channel and for Tyler number one for inviting me over here. So if you guys wanna check out an awesome jig fishing video, click on his right there. Subscribe to this channel, comment below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.